In an attempt to appeal to odd audiences, car brands make sporty versions of cars even when they're not needed. They are realistically pointless and totally distract their maker from making cars that we actually want. These are 10 cars which never needed a sports version. Nismo Juke RS When the Nissan Juke was first released, everyone was like, I I People were overall puzzled about the horrendous design of the Juke. And so you can guess what the reaction was like when Nismo created the Juke RS. Powered by a 1.6 litre turbocharged engine producing 215 brake horsepower, the Juke RS isn't slow. However, it still doesn't take away the fact that sporty SUV and crossovers are kinda pointless. And despite the nice body kit on the Nismo Juke, it still looks like absolute. Renault Sandero 2.0 No one has a Dacia Sandero everywhere else. The Sandero is sold as a Renault in countries such as Brazil and South Africa. As well as getting a better but still mediocre badge, the Renault variant also got the RS treatment, using a naturally aspirated 2 litre engine pushing at over 150 horsepower. The Sandero RS 2.0 was nippy, but not fast nor slow, just nippy. I'm strangely thankful we didn't get this car on our side of the world. Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT Trackhawk How do you make a sort of pointless SRT powered SUV even more pointless? Put the 707 horsepower SRT Hellcat engine in it. The Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT Trackhawk is a track slaying SUV for the rich and insane. Costing $85,900, the Trackhawk is only $1,000 cheaper than the SRT Demon. Sure, it will whip fast around your local racetrack. But then again, if you wanted some SRT power, wouldn't a Hellcat or Demon do? Range Rover Sport In 2004, people drove around in their fancy Range Rover Vogues, feeling like they were on cloud nine. However, some people suggested that Land Rover made a sportier version of the Range Rover. Rather than just put a nice body kit, bigger engine, and sportier suspension on a Vogue, Land Rover made an entirely different car. Originally, there was actually a Discovery underneath, but since the new model has been released, it has become a fully fledged Range Rooney. It even has an SVR model. Cool, but kind of unwanted. Audi S3 Convertible In my eyes, the Audi S3 Convertible has always been a hit and miss for me. The idea of how an open top hatchback being a good idea is beyond me. But what takes the biscuit is the S3 version. It still has the 2.0 litre engine producing 305 brake horsepower and all wheel drive. But it is also heavy, expensive and the proof that Volkswagen has way too much money on their hands. It's 110 euro more than a Porsche Boxster. Just let that sink in. BMW X5M Wow, there's a lot of SUVs in this list. The BMW X5M is a twin turbo V8 powered SUV with the ability to haul ass on any terrain. It's big enough to mark its territory, yet stealthy enough to blend in. However, a massive engine with big power and a short series 60 ton is all well and good. But you really think all the soccer moms care about their 100,000 euro plus car beating all of its plebeians at football training to 60? I don't think so. Bentley Continental Super Sports The world's fastest four-seater which is also a luxury grand tour. The epic Bentley Continental Super Sports is a truly magnificent piece of engineering and design, but it has gone so far away from its roots that it's almost trying too hard. People buy Bentleys to cruise from country to country with their significant other, savouring their surroundings rather than blasting through them at over 200 miles an hour. That's what a Ferrari is for. Mercedes R63 AMG A one of a kind machine. The Mercedes R63 AMG is a 500 brake horsepower V8 powered brute. It's fast, practical and badass. However, very few people have purchased the minivan from hell over the years. But it's still being made today. I approve of its existence. But sadly, a V8 minivan isn't really wanted or needed in the real world. So it's kind of useless. Audi Q7 V12 TDI Easily one of the most epic diesels ever made. The Audi Q7 V12 TDI was a one of a kind machine. It produced 493 brake horsepower, but if that's not enough, then its impressive 738 pound feet of torque was bound to excite you. Using a similar engine than the Audi R10 Le Mans winner, the Q7 V12 TDI was a real winner. However, the V12 TDI never really belonged in the Q7. It was originally going to be used in the RS to make one of the first ever diesel supercars, and that car never left its concept form. Toyota Prius Sport. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, they actually made one. The Toyota Prius Sport is a sporty version of easily one of the least sportiest cars on the planet. With some visual changes and improved handling, the Prius was really stepping it up towards the big boys. But there's a problem. The Prius can't exactly be sporty. Its hybrid technology and large weight aren't exactly the ideal ingredients for making a sports car. If Toyota wanted to make a sporty Prius, they might as well see if there's demand and make a purpose-built one instead. 
Mm-hmm.